Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I decided to record something a little bit different. Um, this is gonna be me showing you how to solve a real interview uh, recruitment task for a, a React uh, intern uh, that I came across. And uh, the result of that task, it's gonna be a live coding task, not some kind of interview questions. I don't really like this because most of the time you're getting asked about what is this in JS? Well, it's seldomly really used and, and it's good to know, but not really something checking your level of knowledge. So the task is to create a simple app that will display superheroes. As you can see, it's not really styled and it's just displaying the name and some kind of image uh, also uh, as you can see uh, for this task there's a well let me explain it this way uh, so we're in a web uh, code pen sandbox uh, i will link uh, post the link in the comment below or in the description your tab is to write the simple app, uh, as you've seen, uh, that is displaying the heroes and its names. And basically, this is the only file that you have to change and write the code in. We don't really care about the styling. The important and the tricky part is here. This is the API JS file uh, that is uh, simulating the real API method uh, that will asynchronously provide you with some kind of data. So what you can see here is an array of objects. Um, each object is representing one superhero. For example, you have the name, the real name and the photo. But the problem here is uh, you can't modify this file and the uh, data array isn't really exported from that file. And the way you get it is through this method named get heroes. And it may seem a little bit complicated at first. So let me quickly guide you through it. Uh, you have a function that is returning a promise. Uh, this promise sets a timeout and that timeout will resolve after some random amount of time, this is basically um, after one to five seconds. And when the timeout ends, this part of code is being uh, run. So as you can see here, we have an if here, and basically uh, math random is returning a random number from the range of zero to one. So there will be a time when we do resolve the promise with the proper set of data, but also there will be a times that this promise is rejected with an error. So this function is simulating you connecting to the API and getting a data from a remote server or some kind of error like 400 bad requests or 404 uh, resource not found. Right. So uh, I believe this is a good uh, interview task for a junior or an intern because uh, it's rather short, but at the same time can really check whether a given candidate has enough knowledge about JavaScript and React to start working uh, in the company. So if you if you're trying to uh get an internship somewhere definitely uh walk through that task with me and then maybe maybe modify it or repeat it on your own i will try to uh, explain every single trap or every single issue that you may encounter trying to solve um, that uh, that recruitment task so let's get started but first, uh, first things first, there's the problem of getting the data, right? And what I see some candidates do is that 
they're trying to oops sorry they're trying to get data by using something like euros by something like this uh, let's okay let's import that mm, from maybe it's heroes okay and uh, that's the first issue right uh well what you get here uh is uh, a promise and not a data because get heroes is asynchronous because we're using set timeout inside of it so what you're getting here is um a promise that has data data inside of it and you should really await it but uh, this isn't correct approach as you can see uh, there's there's something wrong like we cannot use await outside of asynchronous function so some people will try to mark the whole component as asynchronous and for some of you that might uh, seem silly but well in the interview, you are stressed and, and you can't remember stuff. So that might be problem, a, a kind of problematic, a little bit problematic. Um, other thing I see people do is um, they think that the data that they have to get is living in some kind of real API remote server so what they will try to to do is start using fetch and then even pass get heroes here as a function uh, i've seen them do that if you'd like to you know, get some data using fetch should pass an url so some even try to they remember that they have to pass an url and some will try to pass API here, which is of course not correct. This isn't, let me open the console. This isn't any kind of URL. So the problem uh, here, the concept that they cannot grasp is that there's no URL, there is no remote server. You just have a simple function that's asynchronous and being exported uh, from the other module, okay? So definitely do not use fetch in this case. Um, as I have uh, shown you previously, people try to do something like this, uh, right? And um, even they go a little bit further and they create a state, which I will talk about in a second. state and then maybe uh, they'll do something like uh, I don't know get heroes then data the heroes okay which uh, should compile uh, let me clear that and as you can see, there's no errors really. Let me just, let me just run it. Okay, and here you get an error. As you can see, uh, that this is the case where we get our data, the promise is resolved, but we get an error and this is being triggered three times. So basically on every render and re render of the component, because what people forget to do is that when you're calling some kind of asynchronous function to get the data into your component, you should wrap that in use effect to run this code once after the initial render. So people often forget about use effect hook that should be used in that case. Okay. Uh, and then there's a case where they do 
remember about use effect, but they forget about the dependency array. And this dependency array is an array of values that will trigger the effect to uh, rerun. And if you pass an empty array here, uh, it will run just once. So if you're coming from the uh, from the, um, the lifecycle methods of uh, previous versions of React, this is like component did mount. Okay. Uh, what else people uh, tend to do with that task uh, is doing something like they figure out that they should um, run that function and await uh, for the promise to resolve. But again, they're somehow being pushed in that direction that this is still on the remote server and they um, they expect that the data will be a stream. So what they try to do is they will call data JSON, which is incorrect, uh, which is incorrect of course, uh, because um, as you can see here, this isn't a stream of, of data. This is some kind of response from the API. This is already a proper um, array of objects in JavaScript world. So you don't need any kind of, of tricks to, to convert it. Some people try to do stuff like uh, JSON, parse because they thought well should we parse to, to JSON but no there's there's no need for that you, you can just do this will not trigger the error uh I believe yeah it will it will not but you don't have to do it the simply setting the state is enough okay then uh, as you can see right now then there's a case of handling the uh, error, right? And what I've seen people do is sometimes they forgot that they have to catch even error. Just drop it below. Uh, and what they will do is they somehow they're trying to use the same state and for example here trying to do some kind of strange stuff like uh, how do you type of heroes equal ring uh, this is their indication that there was an error Right, and they are, I don't know why, trying to put two different uh, contexts, two different objects, two different values into the same state. Uh, I know that they are somehow interconnected because you're getting this the error or the data, but what you can do here, simplest solution is just to, create another state for an error. Okay. So you state and somehow they struggle with um, the starting uh, value of the state. Uh, they think that the error might be a string, which is correct. And they start with empty, empty string. But in my opinion, it's better to start, start with undefined or null in that case. But if the null is more readable, so you can get rid of that. Okay, so we're done with the part of the task where we had to, we have to, and oh, of course we have to set error here. So now we're done with the part when we uh, get the data and catch the error. And now there are issues with, um, Rendering. Well, one thing that you definitely have to know when coming to React World is how to map um, the array to components, right? 
So this no, the knowledge of mapping to create components is a must have if you're trying to get an internship in React. So basically, we're calling map to transform the array of objects into array of components. And you can wrap it into a div. And then people will somehow struggle with what, what should be rendered here. And it, it's just a simple image with alt. And SRC is, of course, hero. The property is photo. And as you can see already, we see the beautiful Batman. And then there's a P, which is hero name. And that's that's all. Remember that if you're not doing any um, calculations in that map, you don't need to extract anything like name hero name right what you can the simplest solution is just to create a simple arrow function for for mapping and creating the um the components for each hero right and then uh, the last case uh, oh of course there's one thing missing here that you well shouldn't forget and this is the key Okay, and you can use basically any unique value here. I'm gonna go with the name. If you're fetching data from the database, that should be some kind of database ID. The key is needed for internal React uh, calculation to figure out which uh, elements in the virtual DOM should be uh, replaced when uh, rendering the, the DOM and which can be reused and which which parts have to be added and so forth and so on okay if you google for like this keys we'll find the whole description in the in the documentation and definitely go go with that okay then the, there's the last case of uh, rendering the error and some people um, solve it like this. They check for the error. If there's an error, they will just render an error. Otherwise, they do. Um, that's not correct. It should be here and here. Uh, all, uh, oh, sorry, this should be closed. Um, uh, and then go without that. Okay. Uh, that's one solution. And it's, of course, 100% uh, percent correct. So this is using the ternary expression. And that's fine. Uh, but basically, I don't really like... Um, this uh, solution. Um, I find it's kind of hard uh, to read ternary expressions in JSX. And what I would prefer, but again, this is just my personal choice, is to uh, use the conditional rendering. So if there's, if there's an error, just do that okay it's way cleaner in my opinion for me to read um, than the ternary expression and if there's an error your heroes is still an empty array so mapping through it will return nothing so it will it will not show up on your ui okay let's try reloading this and again uh, as i mentioned before there's some kind of randomization so Sometimes you will get the data and sometimes you will get uh, the error. So to sum up the stuff that you definitely have to know before trying to, to get into your first uh, interview is definitely knowing 
promises very well. And at least the basic hooks in React, the set state and use effect. And definitely you should know how to use use effect to get a data not only from some kind of external uh, API with the fetch method, but also from a local function. Okay, uh, thank you for that. That's gonna be all. Um, maybe the next uh, video I will post will be about the uh, interview task with CSS um, using Flexbox. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. Bye-bye.